it's quite timely given we know how difficult the situation has been with the economy. You've put together some forecasts. Take us through those forecasts. Yes, yeah, sure. Morning, everyone. I think, as you mentioned earlier, the government just released uh, GB GDP data over the weekend. And in fact, for Hong Kong property market, it has been in a very challenging period over the last two years' time. And in fact, uh, we do see that no matter the U.S.-China trade tension, as well as the uh, local protests earlier on, which couple of the in impact on the COVID situation or bring down the property price and rental um, for the 202 overall uh, in a correction phase across the board for the commercial property sector. And of course, for this year in 2021, most of the economists are expecting the GDP will rebound because first of all, from a very low base of 2020. And secondly, we do see some of the previous market concern has been kind of fading away, including the vaccine development Development. This is a positive sign. And also, we do see uh, some uh, certainty coming from the U.S. presidential election, which has, which has been worried by the market beforehand. So we expect, yes, in, in a way that uh, 2020 at the start of the year is still be challenging. But overall, we, with the vaccine development, hopefully it could bring for a more effective um, containment of the pandemic and bring for a more stabilized market in the second half of this year. Right. Okay. I was wondering if you could talk us through a little bit more on 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 the the, the office, uh, the forecast for office space here, because that's the segment that you see both down in terms of rent and price, seven and ten percent. Uh, what what does what does this look like uh, for you? And we have the graphic on your screen, the vacancy rate here. Does it get worse? Yes, I think for office sector, obviously, um, well, again, because of the pandemic, most of the overseas or um, MNCs over. Oh, MNC's corporation um, in 2020, they have been um, very conservative um, in terms of their real estate strategy. Most of them are looking for cost optimization. And obviously, we do see some of the corporates, they are either downsizing or relocate to more cost effective location. So that said, um, for 2020, uh, one of the indicators that we um, capture for the demand side will be the net absorption. Uh, we've seen negative 1.8 million square feet of negative net absorption um, for the uh, uh, 202 overall, which has bring up the vacancy rate of murder for the CBD area as well as for the overall Hong Kong um, to one of the recent high level. Um, so that, that said, in the first half, uh, some of the corporates we are still seeing, they are asking the landlords for rental um, relief currently. Um, and especially as we, as we mentioned earlier, before the border could be reopened again, um, we do expect the leasing momentum will continue to be relatively slow across the board. Um, however, um, the, light, uh, the lifted vacancy rate um, in some of the um, central area, we started to see some positive sign emerging from the Chinese demand um, from the private wealth management side, as well as from the finance field. Um, however, when they first do the lease here in Hong Kong, most likely it's not taking a, a whole floor lease. It's usually a, a smaller size, con talking about um, those uh, less than 5,000 square feet uh, space. So uh, we, we started to see some uh, activities emerging, but overall speaking, we, mm. we do expect some rental pressure um, ongoing in the first half. Okay, Rosanna, you talked about Chinese investment. To what extent is Chinese investment a catalyst for, for residential sales in Hong Kong? What's your view on transaction volumes? Well, for investment transaction volume, um, we, we mainly track those for the commercial sector. Last year, we do already see a, a, a drop of um, a, a investment volume significantly to a, another record low year with um, 60 a billion Hong Kong dollar. Um, however, uh, when we talk to our clients, actually most of them are in a wait and see attitude because of some of the uncertainties we talked about earlier. Um, however, um, there are abundant capital in the market uh, waiting to deploy. Um, there are many dry powder out there. And we do expect this year we should see some pickup of the investment transaction volume, um, especially nowadays. Uh, one of the key demand driver that we've seen would be the uh, mainland capital would be one of the key driver in the investment market. And um, it also coupled with the fact that we also see the um, renminbi versus uh, Hong Kong dollar has been rise by over 10% from its last bottom. So mm. this will make the Hong Kong property price more attractive to some of the investors from the China side. Mm.
OK, OK, so that's one side. That's the inflows from one side. You've got outflows as well. You've got around 300,000 Hong Kong citizens looking potentially for residency status in the UK. That number could well go up. To what extent will that prove a drag for the property market? Well, for the residential sector, I think nowadays is still um, the key demand driver is still the end users, the local residents here in Hong Kong. So, of course, there are some news saying that uh, there will be partial of the residents looking to migrate to some other countries. Uh, but we do see that, first of all, um, this is a relatively um, more mid to long term trend. Currently, uh, we do uh, see from what we observe in 2020, whenever there is a calm down uh, between the COVID waves, the transaction volume is still very high. And in fact, progress sector is still one of the most resilient sector that we observe in 2020. Um, even though we have uh, been through a very challenging year, but the overall, the residential price is still staying, staying flat in 2020. So this year, although um, there may be some um, relocation for the citizens or or some of the migration plan they may have, but uh, we we see the strong pan of demand will still be net of offsetting um, the demand side, especially now we are still at a very low interest rate environment.